Hey there and welcome to Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds. From Bentleys and Jaguars to BMWs, we have been bringing you the latest and hottest cars out of New York's Auto Show. They're all here on our channel. Make sure you check them out if you haven't already. But new today, Lee Hawkins. He tells you what is new from Audi's Sporty S lineup. Take a look. I'm here with Johan Denison, who is the president of Audi North America, and we're here to talk about the RS series or the RS models for Audi. This is the RS5. Right. You showed this in Detroit. It goes on sale in August. Tell me a little bit about this vehicle. Well, the RS models for Audi really represent kind of uh, the high performance flagships to our ranges. This car um, features um, uh, 4.2 uh, direct injection uh, uh, V8, uh, gasoline powered. 450 horsepower. Uh, it's a high rev motor, naturally aspirated, so exhilarating driving performance. Some of the design features in the car that I would like to point out, which really are uh, special to Audi design, but also very characteristic okay. of the RS models. The new slim headlight design with the integrated LEDs, a characteristic Audi feature. Audi, Audi leads in uh, LED headlight technology. The RS model is always distinctive with the honeycomb grill. And of course, the aggressive air intake. This motor wants to breathe. It wants, it's a high rev motor, so it wants to, uh, to have a lot of air. Also, of course, cooling ducts uh, for, for the braking system. Mm -hmm. Moving around some of the design features of the car, the uh, very distinctive Tornado line that you see. Uh, this is a very emotional sports coupe. So rather than just a straight angular line, uh, we've brought in the gentle curve to kind of give the, the, the emotional and the sense of movement to the car. Uh, accentuated by the swage lines lower down the body. The interior of the car, Let's take a um, look. very much characteristic Audi. Um, the closed cockpit design, uh, angle to the driver, everything in easy reach. Uh, sh short, chunky steering wheel cut off at the bottom to allow for easier ingress and, and, uh, okay, yeah. and access. What is it that you're trying to say to the marketplace with the RS family of vehicles? Uh, the RS models represent uh, kind of the pinnacle of Audi performance. So it, with the quattro all-wheel drive system, powerful engines, lightweight bodies, emotional design, craftsmanship, quality engineering, it is the pure essence of Audi. What's the price point? The, we haven't announced official pricing on this car, but uh, it, will, it will probably start in the early 70s. Let's take a look at the other vehicle. Okay, now we're looking at the TTRS, which is uh, just below uh, the RS that we just saw. What do you think of this vehicle? This car, in particular in RS guys, is an absolute rocket ship. The five-cylinder turbo motor configuration actually played an important role in Audi's heritage with the original S1 Ur Quattro models that we did conquer the rallying world. And uh, it reintroduces that into this car. It has a five-cylinder turbocharged motor, 360 horsepower, phenomenal torque, six-speed manual transmission, quattro all-wheel drive. And I see the matte finish here on the wheels. You've got a real racing feel to this car. That is uh, one of the, uh, the, the packages that we offer on the car where you can color code the wheels to, to uh, the body color. Um, we have other all, all aluminum options as well, but it really, I think, expresses, Audi is usually a little bit about understated performance. But when it comes to the TTRS, it loudly proclaims this car's got muscles, it's got dynamism, it wants to move and I want to show the world. You've kind of established uh, yourself with this vehicle. Well, the RS models have uh, made a welcome return to the US after an absence of, uh, of several years. The first in the TTRS, now the RS5. There'll be more RS models in the pipeline uh, in the foreseeable future. And uh, this is, I think, appropriate too for the development of the brand in the US. What do you think now with the return of RS? What are your expectations for sales? Well, the uh, TTRS has already virtually doubled TT sales in the U.S. Uh, somebody commented to me the other day that the cars are so uh, sought after versus availability, it's like they think they're made out of unobtainium. Okay. So uh, we, we think already the order books are looking very robust. We are talking to the factory about increasing the original uh, order for these cars. I expect that we will uh, significantly exceed our, our sales expectations. And uh, already the interest in the RS5 seems to be headed in the same direction. So uh, it all goes well for the future of, of, of forthcoming RS models as well. Now, when you think of printing at home or work, it is pretty much a 2D affair. But now there is new technology that can take your 2D printing world into 3D. But don't bother with those glasses. This is an avatar. 
Hi, my name is Andrew Dent. I'm Head of Research at Material Connection. We are a global materials consultancy and have the world's largest library of innovative materials. And we also look for the most innovative technologies. And one technology I'm, I'm most interested in at the moment is something called 3D printing. I think these exhibits here are a great example of the variations possible within this type of 3D printing. So let's check out some of the things in the exhibit. This is called a Thingomatic from MakerBot Industries. They have a number of different versions, but this one's actually uh, called a Thingomatic. This is a great example of how this type of manufacturing is actually now uh, within the realm of the average consumer. Uh, these products retail between $1,100 and $2,000 and offer us the ability to start creating products ourselves in something that we can put onto a desktop. Let's start this machine. You can see how this is creating a three-dimensional object using two-dimensional printing. It has a, uh, a platen at the bottom which is moving and then plastic is actually being uh, squirted out onto the surface to then um, create the successive layers, eventually ending up with a product that looks like this, a finished bracelet. So this can be done in a number of hours, can be done on your desktop, can be controlled by a very uh, simple computer program. Obviously this needs to be created from a raw material and that raw material is here. This is a spool of nylon. The nylon is fed onto the actual the thingomatic and then that's uh, heated up till it melts and then once it's molten it's then deposited in the specific places on the bracelet to create that three-dimensional object. I think the exciting thing about uh, the MakerBot is the potential for people like myself or the average consumer to actually use it to make things. Uh, I think the idea is there is no limit to what you can make. One can create virtually anything on a small scale um, out of this plastic. You can play around with it and get creative. It's possible to, to make a mug or your own jewelry. I think the, the great thing about it is there's no real limitation as to what you can manufacture. It's really up to your own imagination. Well, not long ago, we took you to New York's American Museum of Natural History to learn about the Northern Lights. Remember that, Jeff? Oh, he's in denial. He loved it. And right now, we are smack in the middle of it all in Alaska. This you do not want to miss. And moving from the heavens back down to the earth, we have Gail Monahan with this week's Cooking Confidential. She's going to show us how to properly line a cake pan. And now that I think about it, that actually might be more complicated than building an Audi or a 3D printer. Let's watch and learn. I'm going to show you how to line a pan for baking to make sure your cake doesn't stick. My feeling is there's nothing worse than going to all this trouble of making a cake and then it's a perfect cake but it breaks when you try to invert it and get it out of the pan. Um, therefore, I grease and flour the pan and I also use parchment paper. This is probably overkill but I feel it's definitely worth it. So I'm going to show you how to grease and line this pan, although these are two other pans. This is a non-stick one and this one is a spring form which goes like that. So you really probably don't have to use the paper, but I use it anyway. You can butter and flour this pan. Or easier, you can take a cooking spray, a baking, it's called baking cooking spray, and it has flour already in the pan. So this is really easy. So you just spray it around the pan, especially in the corners. Um, you can see that there's some flour that came out with the oil. All right, so this is parchment paper. A half, a half of a big sheet or a normal sheet. All right, so this is like origami. What you do is you fold it in half, kind of like you did when you were making an airplane when you were a kid, and you keep folding it in quarters. So you have this little pointed thing. So it looks kind of like something you could throw. Okay, so then you've got your pan. If you go from approximately the center of the pan to the edge of the pan, you're sort of measuring, you're eyeballing that and you cut it off there. 
Obviously, if, it is, if it's too big, it's not gonna fit in the pan. If it's a little too small, it's fine. Okay, so now this should fit. Okay, so there it is. You stick it in the pan. It sticks down to the part that's been greased and floured. And then just for good measure, I do it again. Okay, so there you have it. Now the cake would be perfect. Well, that's what's new on Off Duty Today. Now, later in the week, we will have an interview with up-and-coming band Alabama Shakes. That's with Jim Fusilli. Until then, I'm Wendy Bounds, and I will see you back here tomorrow.